Alright, good morning. I told myself I was going to one take this video and I'm already on take two, so I'm just going to try and get this out. But yeah, this is my recent pickups. Uh, the year is now 2024 and I just want to show you some of the things I've purchased recently while traveling and also some of the items that have been gifted to me through PR that I love. Welcome. If you're new here, I'm Charles McKenzie. I do men's lifestyle, men's fashion. I also cook a little bit on TikTok and you might see some of that here too in the future. So if you're interested in cooking videos, leave it down below. Full disclosure, I haven't cooked in like two months since I've been traveling and I really don't want to do it again, but I might. So before we get started, I'm just going to get dressed and then, uh, yeah, we'll do it. Okay, one sec. The best part about owning your own clothing brand is you can just open up a new tank top every day of the week if you want to. I'm trying to save some for you guys, but I just love them and I can't help myself. So I'm going to go ahead and throw on a new wife pleaser today. This is a uh, size medium. I, when I made them, I made them a little bit, oh, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. I made them a little bit flared for the chest and narrower in the torso. And this is just because most people are like wider in the chest than they are in the torso, but I just wanted it to stay tight everywhere. If you see me looking out there, it's because that's where the monitor is. Now I don't feel as vulnerable, so we can start. And make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to show you the first sample for the Charles McKenzie mohair cardigan that we did. I am going to make a lot of changes, so we'll discuss what we're changing and what to expect for revision number two. And hopefully we get it right the second time. Who knows, it could take 10 times, but stick around and find out. Okay, so it's no secret that I've been a fan of Cole Buxton for a very long time. And I've never purchased because the international duties like almost cost the same as the clothes themselves. So I never bought them being in Canada, but I was in London and I had to go to the store. The first time I went, I didn't buy anything because you know, I was just budgeting. But the second time I went, which was a few weeks ago, I purchased quite a bit. So I'm gonna show you what I got there. And starting with this absolutely beautiful alpaca, it sheds a little bit, that's okay. It's a staple and I can't wait to wear it on those like cool summer nights or summer mornings with the matching shorts. This set also comes in pink. It may come in other colors, I don't know, but I love it. I, I loved it when they dropped it and I needed it and I'm so glad that they had it when I went into the store. I don't remember the price of this, but I will put it on the screen. I think I spent at Cole Buxton almost 900 euros, um, including the bag I purchased, pounds, not euros. So yeah, we got these two items here and I'll show you what they look like on body. I absolutely love the shorts. They're so cozy. They're kind of like bigger than I would personally make if I were to make shorts like this, but I appreciate that they're like lazy and baggy and it's nice to have something like this. I don't need all my shorts to be like short shorts. So this one is perfect, nice and lazy. It's kind of right down to the knee, more of that like classic style than you know the modern style that we're seeing everywhere everywhere but yeah I love it this is probably my favorite thing I've ever purchased and I can't wait to wear it I haven't worn these yet aside from trying them on so that's exciting the sweater I've worn like a hundred times already and I'm trying to keep it clean all right next also from Cole Buxton as you can see is this beautiful bag if you've been following me on Instagram you know I'm obsessed with this I don't go anywhere without it now it is my favorite bag I've ever had in my life the quality is amazing and this is weird but the smell also amazing. You smell how good the leather is. Like it's high, high quality. They don't mess around. And that's what I love about this brand. They really care about delivering high quality products to you. I also love that it has the straps here for just hand holding, but it also has a set of larger straps inside for your shoulder. So you can decide how you want to wear it. You can wear it over your shoulder or you can just hold on to it by hand. This is almost the perfect bag. There's one thing about it that bothers me and it's this inside pocket here. This might be hard to see, but inside the bag, there's a laptop pocket. It's like a sleeve for a laptop on the side, but it just flops around in there, and it may as well not be there. This is hard to describe. I think I'll put in some B-roll of the pocket so you can see what it looks like, but basically it just collapses in the bag and it doesn't stay tight to the side. So you can't like, it's not beneficial to slide a laptop in there or books. Like I like to put my book in there my laptop, but it all just falls over and it doesn't really serve a purpose. It may as well just be one big open tote. What I would love to have seen is a zipper on it or some sort of clasp or perhaps just having it more stretchy or some sort of elastic to keep this taut and to keep this pocket here up to the top instead of it just collapsing to the bottom. That is the only thing about this bag that I would change. 
Not gonna lie, it drives me absolutely insane every day when I'm digging through there and all my like laptop and book is just like falling on all the other stuff and I have to like move it out of the way and then look. That's the one thing I have a complaint for, but otherwise I've never been happier with a bag in my life. The other thing too is it's a very bold statement piece. So if you're comfortable wearing something like this every day, then by all means, but if you prefer something more minimalist or more plain, well then maybe don't go with this bag. Uh, maybe just shop around and find something from a different brand. But I love the brand. I love what they sort of stand for and the uh, styles that they accomplish. So I had to pick this up as well. Moving on. The next piece are these pants. These are from a brand called Thrills. And I believe they're based out of Australia. It's kind of hard to tell, but they have this beautiful pinstripe detailing on them. And I just love the cut of these pants and the shape and how light they are. These are perfect for spring. They also have this beautiful cuff on the bottom. I got a few things from this brand and I'm not gonna lie, I just liked everything except these, excuse me. I love them. I'm not gonna say it feels like the highest quality because it doesn't. I don't think these are gonna last me forever, but I'm definitely gonna get a good season out of them. And I think they're fantastic. Like the silhouette is great. They're definitely too big for me, but I kind of like the look that I was able to accomplish. I just fold it over and put my belt on top and I like how baggy they are. So for me, sizing up kind of benefited the pants. Um, this is a size 42 in European sizing. I don't know what that is in North American. If it's a 32, it's not, it's kind of like a 36. It's really, really, really big. Yeah, I absolutely love these. You can see how I styled them on my Instagram as well. Recently, one of my favorite set of photos I've ever posted and, and the pants just worked really well. Go show it some love if you feel like it. If not, it's okay, I don't care. All right, item number five is this bag from Coach. Now, full disclosure, I'm actually doing a brand partnership with Coach and part of that partnership was to represent their denim world, which they just released. So they sent me this fanny pack and I shot some content around this. You can look at it on my TikTok. This isn't something that I would buy for myself. I'm not gonna lie to you, I like it, but I'm not a huge fanny pack guy. They have some really nice products. Like Coach is one of my favorite brands. And when I got approached to work with them, I was so excited. I've never worked with a brand that was more like designer or elevated before. And that is the goal of mine going forward into 2024 is to just work with brands who I align with. This is one of them. This piece specifically, was a bit tricky for me to pull off into style. It's nice because my girlfriend and I can share this and I can wear this, you know, maybe to like the beach or something or like a, more of a summer day. We're going to Florida next week. So just something light to carry around with me. But in terms of my personal style, it wouldn't be my first choice. However, it is really high quality. Um, the denim is nice. And then inside they have all this beautiful like coach branding, which I appreciate. It's just a great little bag. I think it's more suited for somebody who's petite or doesn't carry much around with them or uh, maybe the woman in your life perhaps. Um, obviously like a man can style this like a denim fanny pack. There's no reason you can't, but I carry a lot of stuff around with me. So this barely gets the job done. That cool Buxton bag is more so what I carry around with me. So I don't need an additional bag most of the time, but this one I absolutely love. I think it's really cool. And their entire collection right now is super sick. There's a few other pieces I have my eye on. So just, you know, keep a lookout on my social media. You might be see you might see me style something else for them soon if you like it go pick it up if you don't it's all good next all right shoes so these are a pair of farmers that i just walked in and instantly purchased uh, there's a store in toronto called size with a question mark at the end they're really cool guys they had this on display as well as another one in sort of a cream color they didn't have my size in the cream so i just went with the pink i love these like they're so fun. I'm a huge fan of Converse. If you've been following me, you know it's like my favorite sort of lifetime shoe. I think it's just a classic and fun silhouette. I'm not a huge sneakerhead, so Converse scratches that itch for me personally. However, lately I've been sort of growing up and trying on more loafers and leather and boots. Also love that, but there's a soft spot in my heart for Converse, especially pink ones. These ones got me and they were $50 which is so sick. These are Puma and Fenty, and they're called the Creeper Fatty, which is a funny name, but I love them. You can see like I sort of have preferences with shoes, um, especially when I'm having fun with like color and stuff. I really like pink. I really like this like light lilac color. I love just like bold items sometimes. This sole also gives me some added height. So yeah, these are really cool. I haven't styled them yet. I'm definitely going to in the summer. It's just gonna be a matter of 
when the right outfit comes along for these shoes, but I absolutely love them and I think the quality is fantastic. They're also super comfortable. So I am normally a size 10 in shoes, but I got a 10 and a half in the, so keep that in mind. If you're looking for these shoes, I would size up by half a size. Right, so the last pair of shoes is in here. And if you follow me on Instagram and TikTok, you may have seen these already. I've been wearing them for about a month and a half now, maybe yeah, a month and a half sounds about right. I'm obsessed with these shoes. These are the controversial, you know, Maison Margiela tabbies. And I think they're absolutely sick. They're way more comfortable than they look. My toe is huge. So I think this toe box is gonna stretch out like quite a lot and look really weird on me. And it's already collapsing inside because I got this wide foot, but for somebody with the wide foot, these actually fit quite well, um, and they're really comfortable. I will say the break-in process of these shoes was the hardest break-in process I've ever had of any shoe in my life, hands down, like I almost threw them in the garbage. That's how mad I was. Like, it was so painful. I had like layers of cotton swabs and band-aids um, and tape on my heels to try and pad myself uh, from them, and it still was just slicing me through in the heel, not in the toe. This was fine, but this was brutal. So I ended up going home after my trip and stomping on the heel just to like loosen it up a bit. And I know that's probably making so many of you like cringe, but I, it was either that or throw them out. So I did that and I think after like a couple more wears and after my feet healed, um, they became really comfortable. I tried them on in the store and they were like the com most comfortable shoe I've ever tried on. And I think because those ones may have been broken in, these ones being brand new were absolutely terrible. But yeah, I love them. They're really, really high quality and they fit really well. They just add a little bit of interest to like, you know, I dress plain sometimes, especially if I'm wearing like all black or whatever. I don't really mess around too much with anything uh, accessory wise other than just like the silhouette. So these are really nice to just add that little bit of flavor. They've definitely gotten a little bit of wear. I could probably clean them up a bit, but I don't mind. I love them and I am super, super happy I bought them. These are probably my most expensive item of clothing I've ever purchased in my life. and maybe ever will purchase for at least the time being because uh, you can't be buying stuff like this all the time. You really do have to love it. And I've always had my eyes on these. You know, you see creators wearing them all the time and you're like, those are weird. Or you're like, oh, those are cool. I was one of the people who thought those were cool. So I was like, maybe one day I'll buy them. I did and here we are, I have them and I don't regret it at all. Before we move on to other categories, I have to talk about these socks. My socks are all trash. so. I picked up new socks and my friend Kyle, uh, thank you Kyle, you can follow him at Kyle from Insta. I'll actually put his uh, Instagram link in the bio below. He put me on to these socks from Cotton. This brand uses Egyptian cotton, um, so it says 87% Egyptian cotton, 10% nylon, 3% elastane on the socks. These are so thick, so plush, like so, so nice. I bought them months ago in the summer and I lost them. I don't know where they went. So I was just in Toronto and I walked past the store, I was like, I need to get more. So I actually bought three pairs of them. I bought two of the white pairs and one of the blue pairs. And I think I could fill my whole sock drawer with just these socks and be satisfied. They're $12 Canadian per pair, so not the cheapest thing in the world, but for something like this, like I'm super, super stoked on it. So next we're gonna chat about fragrances that I purchased. This right here is Marrakesh Intense from Aesop or Aesop, you could say it however you want to say it. This is something that I've always been obsessed over. This was a gift from my girlfriend for my birthday in January. I love it. I don't know what's wrong with me. I never would have bought this for myself. I just have a hard time sometimes pulling the trigger on some things that I, I know I really want. And I'll go out and buy other fragrances like on impulse. I don't know what my problem is, but I've always wanted this and I've always just been like, ah, like maybe one day, maybe one day. And I think she got sick of hearing it, so she bought it for me, which is great. I have this massive fragrance collection, and I don't need any more fragrances. I'm really like attached to scents. I love when things smell good. I love having different options. I love the aesthetic of the bottles. I, I love it all. I think this is my favorite category of anything in like the fashion world. It's just fragrances. Home decor, I love. Furniture, I love. But fragrances, like I, I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm obsessed with them. And I'm trying to just like slow down. I think I'm done buying fragrances for a little while. Probably not. And Marrakesh Intense from Aesop has this like warmness to it, the spiciness. She also says it smells like bug spray when you first spray it, and I kind of agree. It's got this sort of like really synthetic, like chemical-y thing going on, but I don't think it's a synthetic fragrance at all. It smells very natural, actually. It's just a very, very cozy scent. They don't last forever. I think they become more of a skin scent within like three to five hours. It doesn't matter. I think it's great. Another fragrance I picked up, De Los Santos. This is one of, if not my favorite Byredo fragrance. This brand is insane. I love the calf. How it just like magnetizes on. 
This smells like, oh, like the woods and rain, but also like crisp. It's just a sick, musky, woody, amazing, like amazing fragrance. Oh my God. This is like masculine and feminine. You can both wear this for sure, but like literally obsessed with this fragrance. I've got a few fragrances from Byredo and I've smelled the entire line. I had a sample of this last time I was in Florida. It was given to me and I sprayed it on. I was like, oh my God. And it was my first time smelling it. I was like, I need this. And then I ended up buying it a few months later uh, in Toronto. I was like, I have to, I can't live without it. This thing is insane. I love it so much. And you're gonna find a theme here where I say all of these fragrances are the best thing I've ever smelled. And it, it's true. They're all the best things I've ever smelled in my life. It doesn't have to be one at the top and all the other ones are worse. This is the best thing I've ever smelled. And it lasts quite a while. It is just, it's seductive. I don't know. You have to just try this one, seriously. Okay, the next one is this little fragrance oil here from Better World Fragrance House. Better World Fragrance House is Drake's brand and he only did candles for a long time. This one is called Carby Musk. He previously had a candle called Carby Musk and that smells identical to a fragrance he had designed just for him. So Drake's personal scent was designed by Michael Carby and it is called Carby Musk. So this is what Drake has been wearing for a long time. I imagine he just decided to stop gatekeeping the fragrance to the world and make it. So this is $200 for this 10 mil thing. It's insane, trust me, I understand. After getting it for free, when it runs out, I'm gonna rebuy it. This is number one, like, okay, I know I just said, I, I say everything's my favorite smell in the world. I did a TikTok review of this and I almost had tears in my eyes when I smelled the candle. Like thinking about this makes me emotional. I don't know what it is. Like, oh, it like reminds me of my dad or something. This is actually insane. Okay, so here's the deal with this. It's a 10 mil fragrance oil, no alcohol, nothing. So you rub it on, it's pure fragrance oil. This lasts forever. Like you put it on the morning, you wake up the next morning and still smell it. It is on my clothes permanently from like rubbing on my neck from other clothing. This thing is strong. I walked into a coffee shop. It doesn't like, it's not like strong, like you sprayed too much. It's just like you have this deep, amazing aura around you of fragrance. And I walked into a coffee shop and this like mom with her child was like, I'm sorry to bother you, but like, you smell so good. What are you wearing? And it was this, and we talked about it for a little while. She was very sweet. Something about this is freaking insane. I don't know what to say other than this is probably the best smell I've ever smelled in my life. Um, period, period, hands down. Like Venetian Bergamot was my number one fragrance of all time. It got me into fragrances. I like will search for it for the rest of my life and it was discontinued, but this is like next level. This almost made me cry. It smells like my dad. It smells like Swiss Army. It smells like masculine man. It smells like the early 2000s. It smells deep and it smells like you have money and it's just, oh, it's seductive. It's so, so good. I'm gonna stop pumping this up so much because I don't want you to get it and be disappointed. But for me, this is like number one all time. Crazy, right? $200 for 10 mil. Okay. Tough act to follow. I know, totally different. Uh, Molten Brown. So this is a brand I've seen all over social media, mostly from European creators. And this is not available in Canada, to my knowledge. If it is, I don't know where to get it. I love the bottles. I think they're beautiful. I didn't love all of the fragrances from the house. But this one spoke to me. I went to London with my buddy Ryan in December. I smelled them all, I was like, oh my God, this is nice. And then I went back with my girlfriend Val. I picked it up in Duty Freeze. Oh my God. Okay, this is totally different than this. If you've ever been to Florida or like, I don't know, I imagine California smells the same. You get off the airplane and it smells like air, the salty like ocean air. And that's what this smells like. It's like we, they bottled that smell and put it in here. I just feel the same giddy happiness as I did when I went to Florida with her and the weather was amazing. When I go to Florida, I'm bringing this one with me and I'm gonna be bringing this one with me and I think that's it. I really wanna limit the fragrances I travel with because I just wanna tie them to the experiences more and this one, like, this is my number one summer fragrance this year, for sure. So I love this one. This is called Coastal Cypress and Sea Fennel. All right, next this is Body Lotion from Aesop. I got this like two days ago, but I, I've had two previously. I refill them when they go empty. These are perfect for traveling and they smell so good. My favorite one is this one. This is a Resolute Hydrating Body Balm. You can't go wrong with any of them. They're about $54 each, so it is expensive, but for traveling, it's priceless because you just shove it in your bag. Be careful, this is a metal container and it cracks, the lotion will leak out. The associate at the store recommended me to try squeezing it all from the bottom and rolling this up as I go. So that's what I'm gonna do with this one. Uh, just keep that in mind when you're traveling, if you open your bag, I had lotion all over my bag at one point, it broke. So maybe just try rolling it from the bottom. It's not great and they're fantastic to travel with. So that's that. 
Next up are some glasses. These are from the brand Jimmy Fairley, which is a brand in the United Kingdom. I went to the store in London. They invited me uh, in there, which was really, really kind, and they gifted me two pairs of glasses. They were only supposed to gift me one, but I think they made a mistake and ended up gifting me two. Not mad about it. My favorite part about them, honestly, is the case. It feels like the YSL cases, like it's just really premium, and it has this like nice magnetic closure, which is great. So I've got two, it's what they look like on. I love them, they were, I wanted something more bold. They were really bold for me, but I FaceTimed my girlfriend, she told me to get them. I was like, you know what, let's just take the risk. And I've grown to love them more over time. The one thing I don't like about them is like, for some reason, they're really loose on my head. Like they just, look at this. And it's only on this side. And this happened after like a week of wearing them. Really, really disappointed because I love these. These are my favorite glasses I've ever had. And that kind of just like makes me not want to wear them. Such a bummer, but that's okay. I have a second pair. I actually wanted them with the tint originally. So they sent me one without the tint and I was like, what the heck? And then they sent me these. Uh, these ones fit amazing. Like they're snug, they're tight, like they're, and I've worn them more than those and they haven't like loosened up on me. So it's fantastic. I love the tint in the, in the lenses and I think these are perfect. So it's the same thing just with the, um, just with the tint of the lenses. I love it. I think they're super nice. And yeah, these ones, I don't have that problem. Like they don't fall off. So they're fantastic. Something's up with those, but yeah. I got two pairs of glasses, indoor and outdoor. All right, so I'm gonna talk about some books I recently picked up. First is this coffee table book from Amazon. I bought it on Amazon, but you can get this kind of anywhere, like Indigo, Chapters, Amazon. Uh, even Winners and HomeSense has this, but this is just a nice little coffee table book. I like to leave it open on a stand and just display watches so I can manifest something beautiful for myself one day. And uh, yeah, I think it's really cool to just have. And I love how it's just this suede texture to it. The green is really nice. It looks expensive. And uh, who doesn't like Rolex? That's it. There's nothing special about this. Things like 100 bucks, maybe 120. Um, but yeah, I love it. Now, my coffee table book obsession will remain forever. It's an expensive habit, so I try to thrift as many of them as I can. And this is one that I thrifted from Value Village for $6.99. It's just a Picasso book filled with all of his works, which is really, really cool. So this is something that you can just kind of flip through. You know, you're sitting down here, you're bored, you don't want to look at your phone. Just flipping through these books is really nice. It's also a cool conversation piece. A little hack for all of you who are thrifting coffee table books. Sometimes these covers are damaged, right? Because they're used. So just take them off. And now you have this clean looking coffee table book that you can display. That's that. So I do read every day. And right now I am reading Elon Musk. I read the Steve Jobs book from Walter Isaacson and I loved it. A lot of things I didn't know about his life just kind of surprised me. And the same thing is true here. This book is very, very interesting. I don't know if you like him or don't like him. I, and uh, quite honestly, I don't really care. I like to just decide for myself what I like and what I don't like. So I'm reading this book about him and I'm learning a lot about his life. It's super, super interesting. His childhood so far seems insane. Way worse than mine. I am currently only, I don't know, like 110 pages through this book. So I've got a long way to go. It looks like a 400 page here, but it's a very exciting read and like time kind of just flies when I read it. So very, very interesting. I love this. I love learning about people, especially polarizing people that, you know, cause controversy. Another one I just thrifted the other day is this book called Blind Spots. I just looked at it and I was like, okay, what do we got here? And I read the description and I was like, oh, this seems like a decent little read. You know, somebody just fill the gaps between books. I have no idea if this book is good or bad, but we'll find out. If you've made it this far, thank you for watching. I really appreciate the fact that you guys are watching my YouTube videos. These are hard to do. They're a lot of work. It's just like, is this gonna be worth it? I don't know, but I like to just talk about things that are going on and a little more in depth. So this allows me to do that outside of like Instagram and TikTok. And if you're here watching, thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. YouTube is a, is a tough one. So yeah, any support is very, very, very helpful. Now the cardigan, this is the first sample from my manufacturer in China. Yes, China, believe it or not. And we can talk about that, but here is the back. They got this all wrong. The star is the wrong shape, okay? It's the wrong size and it's the wrong color, but that is okay. I'm not mad about it. I knew it wasn't gonna be perfect the first time. Um, I ended up using one of their pattern blocks because I didn't have a pattern maker. I just had a tech pack with some measurements. And this isn't the silhouette I was aiming for at all, but it does have some of my measurements, which we've since changed. I'm gonna go for more of a deeper pink on the next one. 
and you can see it's got this crop fit to it that I love, especially for an oversized item. Now this isn't that oversized. This is more of a traditional fit. We've now taken their pattern and we've adjusted it and made our own actual pattern. So we've made lots of changes. For example, the shoulder seam is right here. Can you see that? Oh yeah, it's right here. Okay, I've dropped the shoulder down to about here. I've also widened the body of the cardigan, like the armpits. I've widened that a little bit and the whole waist I've widened quite a lot. Apart from that, I've increased the width of the ribbing on the cuff here at the bottom. So this is, I believe, six centimeters. I've turned it into eight. This is, I don't remember, but I've added about 25% to this. So this is gonna be wider as well. Ask for bigger buttons. Another thing I've done is raise up the top of it. So the top button will probably be more here. So a lot of changes and I'm also getting my neck labels made in London and then shipped to China um, for them to sew them in. Now, a lot of people like think of China as like sweatshops and stuff. And I totally understand the aversion on the consumer side of things to purchasing items from China uh, or that are made in China. I actually met Cole Buxton at his store in London and discussed things with him for like 45 minutes. The manufacturer I use for my wife's business is where he used to manufacture in London as well. He's since like, you know, graduated. I'm like, oh, like where do you get this stuff done? So his stuff is actually from China as well. Some of it, not all of it. And I was like, oh, like, don't you think that like, that's gonna be perceived as like, you know, less like valuable or like, you know, like not very sort of, um, what's the word? What is the word? Ethical. And he was like, honestly, man, like after going there, seeing the shops and stuff, China's 10 years ahead of the rest of the world. He's like, I've seen worse working conditions in Italy or in London, like where he lives. And I was surprised by that. And he basically said the shops that he saw and that he's working with, like they're, they're paid living wages. They're like all like adults, thank God. And he's like, you can eat off the floor. It is like an oiled machine. They're so concise. They're so consistent. Like the quality is consistent. They're quick. Um, which is amazing when you're looking for a manufacturer and they're more affordable than a lot of other parts of the world. And I was surprised by that. Obviously he's like, don't, you know, go on Alibaba and like find manufacturers there. Like you might get into some iffy territory, but I ended up finding one. We FaceTime, they showed me the shop. They talked to me, really happy to do business together. They work with some really big brands. I won't name drop them is one of them. And I was like, oh, that's like kind of sick. So I'm working with them now. And this was the first attempt and we'll see what the second attempt is. I really want to keep my costs down, especially for somebody who's really small in the fashion world. It's, it's almost impossible. Like I can only do 50 units at a time and it's going to cost me all the money I have in the brand. And if I don't sell them, I can't do it again. So I'm going to have to do my best to sell them and uh, hopefully you guys like them and I deliver a quality product and I can do it again. But you have to sort of be very resourceful with cutting costs on packaging and stuff when you're starting out, which is unfortunate, but it is the world. Uh, that I live in and I'm competing with all these other brands who are established and it's almost impossible So if you support me, that'd be fantastic. If you don't, it's okay You can just enjoy the clothes on somebody else. I'm gonna love it when it's done. I know that for a fact um, I wouldn't give it to you guys to purchase if I didn't think it was perfect. So hopefully you like it I just want to say thank you again for watching if you made it this far You guys are the best if you have any questions leave them down below. Just remember life is for living have fun dress well I love you guys and I'll see you later